Next up, we have Franco de Gomez from uh, DG Group. Franco is a marketing professional with a unique view on the world of marketing. Franco has worked in figure sales and marketing and promotion for over 20 plus years. In 2007, Franco formed the DG Group, a marketing solutions provider specializing in digital and online marketing solutions for the SME businesses. As global economics have flatlined, the world of digital marketing has accelerated. Franco's passion is exposing, exposing these new 21st century opportunities that can make a real difference in business, business of any size. Without further ado, I give you Franco the bonus. Welcome everybody, it's great to see you and uh, thank you so much for coming out. It's, um, when a group of people get together and they organize an event like this, you always have this fear that you're going to have one person in the audience and it's wonderful to see a group of people out and, uh, and hopefully enjoy the evening. So, um, let's get started. The first thing I will say is, uh, if there's anything as I go through this presentation, like Declan, I'm going to be firing a lot of you. Like this presentation could be the 500 rules of successful marketing and, and the reality is there's a lot to talk about. So if there's anything you want to hear more about, please just text yes and your name to that number. I don't have a lovely short code, I just have my, phone, my mobile phone number. But please text that and um, I will uh, get back to you. So, the world has changed a lot since the 21st century began. We're 13 years into it and Wow, a lot has happened. Facebook, Twitter, all of that stuff didn't exist before. Um, and even QR codes. In fact, QR codes did exist, but they were existed for uh, in the manufacturing industry for making cars. That's what they were originally designed for. And then somebody, like blogs, like everything else, figured out that could be useful for marketing. And they, it was therefore implemented that way. So, you can do so much more these days than you could ever before. But, I'm just going to turn this this way. But you've got to do it in a particular way, otherwise you're just going to spin wheels. And I kind of condense that down into these five really core rules. And the first rule is, you have to put your website at the very center of your business. Now, let me give you an example of that. Google had a tool, uh, a blogging engine, uh, and they recently shut it down. And thousands and thousands upon thousands of people had put so much effort into posting information on this platform, only to find out, oh, it's gone, or it's going to be shut down. Now, Google gave them the opportunity to export the information. Now, had they specifically focused on their website rather than somebody else's engine, they wouldn't have had to redo all that work. Now, that's just a practical example of that. Same thing with Facebook. Everybody working so hard to get onto Facebook and get thousands of followers, only now to find out that your posts get to a fraction of those people unless you're willing to pay for it. Many of you may not know that, but that's the situation. So you've done all this work to create a following on Facebook, and now you have to pay to send your message to them. So, put your website at the center of your business, because this is what we're talking about. Your company's here, your brand is here, the next part, the next step in that chain is your website. It plugs into media, promotion, print, mobile, email, online marketing, and the various activities there. Everything you do should go out, and everything that's out there should point back in. This is the flow down. As Declan talked about, the funnel. Well, this is a marketing funnel. It all points down through your website, your brand, your company. So, that's the, the first rule is make your website. And I'm not just talking about, you know, cursory kind of thing. The reason is, online is growing. Print marketing, everything else is shrinking. And I'll show you some more data on that later on. But online marketing is growing. The reality now is by, so 2010, 25 exabytes of data per month. I don't want to get into the detail of that. But that's, we all know the memory sticks, you know, 16 gig, 32 gig memory sticks. One exabyte is 1,000 million gigabytes. 25,000 million gigabytes per month was consumed. By 2015, that's going to go up to almost 100 exabytes per month. 
We are all spending more time online doing more stuff, browsing, finding the services we want to find. So, put your website at the center of your business. Google, in the US, in the first half of 2012, became the largest advertising medium. Overtook, this is uh, newspapers and magazines, dark and light blue, and here we go, it, down they go, and Google, up it goes. It became the leading, the last one is half year number, it became the leading advertiser in the US. That's just incredible. Mm -hmm. So, you don't just get a website these days. If you think, you know, 10 years ago, get a website, put some stuff up there, never look at it again, that's fine. No, not anymore. If that's your plan, then you're not really gonna do very well, okay? You've gotta invest in your web assets. It's the engine of your business. Now, uh, it also includes things like optimization and advertising, and this little chart shows you know, essentially the, the click-through rates based on your position. I'm not going to go through it in detail, but the chart speaks for itself. 95% um, of web searches never go beyond page one. Many of you have probably heard that before. But what you might not have heard of is because of the growth of Google and the fact that they are taking over this, this thing, and they're making, it's a brilliant strategy. It's absolutely brilliant. If we make optimization of your website more difficult, What's the next thing people are going to do? They still need to be ranked. They're going to pay us for it. So we now have these, it's estimated 25,000 servers globally crunching and indexing websites. We can either spend more on that, so, but would that cost us money to display results? Or we can make it harder for people to rank well, so then they're going to pay for the ranking. Because now, 65% of all clicks come from that sponsored area. So that's something, you know, and I'll talk about this later on. You can either invest, now I'd say do both. You, you need to do both. You can invest in SEO, but you also now need to invest in some form of online promotion, marketing, advertising. Now, as an example, what you're really trying to achieve, and this is one of our clients, what you're really trying to achieve is you need to be here, which is the sponsored area. You need to be here, which is the organic area. And you need to be here. Use the free tools. Google Maps is a free tool. Use it. If you set it up correctly, someone searching for what you offer in your area will be, you will show up in the Google Maps. That's a free listing. So even if you get one of these, great. But really what you're looking for is as many of those as you possibly can. Own page one where you can. Now, you know, I get people coming to me saying, I want to be number one on page one for blinds. Great. Okay. Give me 100,000 and 12 months and you might get there. Right? But the reality is, don't worry about, we call it long tail. Um, don't worry about blinds. Because you know what? If a little old lady, if you were here and you're number one for blinds in Ireland and a little lady in Dolly Gall brings you or Cork and says, I'd like a blind for my kitchen. Are you going to drive all the way down to install that one blind in the kitchen? If not, then think about blinds, Blanchestown, or whatever it may be. So, you know, focus on what you want to achieve. Don't worry about the big shark. Worry about all the little tuna, oh, not tuna, all the little sardines that you can grab along the way. Okay. Rule two, your content. This is fundamentally what Google has changed in the last two years, okay? You've got to have fresh content regularly updated on your website. Google wants to see websites that are alive. If your website is static, if it's a ghost town, they don't care. So you need, your website needs to be alive. Um, if you search for Google Panda in the article section of my website, I've written an article on this and it explains exactly what they've done. But they've updated 22 times, 22 updates to their ranking algorithm that now essentially has completely changed. I mean, again, uh, about a year ago, I was looking down the barrel of a gun saying, thanks Google, you've killed my business. You've killed my opportunity to make money or going. But actually, they've enabled the business model. 
And that's something I'll talk about later on. But it's, it's doing fundamentally this service for, for companies. It's providing that fresh content on a regular basis. But you have to, you, this is something you can do yourselves. I defy any business owner that I speak to. Often people say, oh, I don't really know what to talk about. Well, you know what? There are a million and one things. I had a company come to me that does uh, forensic cleaning services. And they were, well, not really, what can we talk about? You know what? You clean up dead bodies. Everybody wants to hear about that. <laughs> right? It's interesting to people. It's also interesting that you go and clean up really dirty houses and what you find and that people are interested in that. So it's every company, no matter what you do, has something interesting to talk about that your customers and friends of your customers want to know about. So you can talk about special offers, articles, uh, write an article about stuff, generally what we do. I write, I write articles every week or so, a couple of weeks, about what I like talking about. Um, add some testimonials, add a case study, update your portfolio, you know, your, your recent projects, if, if, that's what, if you're a service business. Um, all of that starts, remember who won, all of that starts on your website. And once you've put it on your website, you post it out to social media through one or more channels, and you include a link back, because that's the other thing Google wants to see. Google uses links back to your website as endorsements. And guess what? Google doesn't know that it's your website, your, sorry, your social media page, your Facebook page. It doesn't know who owns that. All it sees is a link. Now, if you're going to do social media and you're only going to do one, then you've got to do Google+. Plus. So I'll talk about that later on, but just remember that. And if you don't update your website, Google's going to get bored. And Google visits your website more than any customer ever will. More than all your customers put together, Google visits it more often. Unless you don't update it, in which case it doesn't. Rule three, you need a responsive website. You might have heard this term before. Um, it's a little bit like saying a mobile website, but it's, it's mobile version two. It's, it's beyond that. And this is how quickly things have moved. Ten years ago, mobile web. Ten years ago, iPhones didn't exist. I mean, that, that platform has created this whole new area. Now, in the results, in the survey we did, about 30% of respondents said that they'd updated their website in the last two years. How many of you here have a mobile website? Hands up. Okay, a few. Well done. That's good. Um, if you don't have a mobile website, on average, 30% of all traffic to your website is coming from smartphones. 30%. And Google <coughs> data shows 64% of those people will immediately leave when they hit a non-optimized website. So you're potentially losing, if my maths is right, probably not, about 20% of all traffic to your site are immediately leaving because they're not seeing, they're not finding something. It's like saying, I'm going to open a shop, and then I'm just going to put boxes all over the place and make it really hard to find what I need to find, and then the checkouts, you know, are going to be somewhere in the corner. You wouldn't do that. Okay, so think about that. Very important. Uh, <coughs> smartphones in 2011 outsold PCs and notebooks combined. In 2011. It became the primary, the major uh, viewing platform. By 2014, smartphone browsing will overtake desktop browsing. We will all, and we all know it, anyone who owns a smartphone here, you all know how often you're online with it, <coughs> compared to your PC. By 2015, we're all gonna be searching more on mobiles, on smartphones, than we are on PCs. So again, that points to the fact, if you don't have a smartphone, website, an optimized website, you're gonna lose out on a lot of opportunity. Now, what is a responsive website? Hold on a second, I'm just going to switch this. Sorry, one sec. Okay, I'm going to give you an example of what a responsive website does, uh, very quickly. So this is our website. Now, people won't see this because this is not what somebody does, but it's just to illustrate. 
This uh, responsive website has a number of profiles that respond to the resolution of the device that people are viewing your website on. So what you've got is this is PC high res, then you've got low res, then you have iPad, then you have smartphone horizontally, smartphone vertically. So the whole thing, you can see even the menu structure changes to be more app-like, dependent on the resolution and the platform that people are browsing your site on. And the system, sorry, one second, we go back to this. The system automatically adjusts and displays, provides the optimum, uh, the optimum viewing experience for that user. Now, rule four. So, thank you. Rule four, rule five, rule, sorry, rule three is get a smartphone or get an optimized website. Rule four is you need to be socially active. Now, you know, look, you'll hear every, everyone involved in marketing talk about social media and how it's so important and you've got to be doing it and it's, you know, the most important thing you can do. I don't ascribe to it being the most important thing you can do, but it is important. And I'm going to give you, I approach the world from this term that I like to call sanity marketing. It's about doing stuff that makes sense, not just what everybody suggests you should do. If it provides a return on investment, do it. If it doesn't, don't do it. Uh, but this is one area that you've got to have a long-term view. Do not do this if you want results tomorrow, or even next week or next month. <clears throat> this is about attraction marketing. It's about creating an environment around you where people can get to know you and trust you before they ever meet you. And I learned this myself. Everything I'm talking to you about is something that I buy into. So I started writing articles and various things, and a year later, or up to a year later, I wasn't, nothing was happening. But then all of a sudden, people started saying to me, I read your articles, I really like them. And then I started to get phone calls. Now that's great, it's good for the ego, not good for my pocket. But I then started to get phone calls from people saying, not can you price up a website for me, or you know, how much is it to do this or that? The question was, I want you to do this for me. Very different words. Not how much, not can you or have you, but I want you to do this for me. And it's because before they ever spoken to me, they brought into they brought into my expertise and my knowledge from all the articles I've written. So it goes back to, you know, this is all a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you do it, it starts to feed on itself. So how it used to be is you had to pay for a designer to design your ad, you had to pay a newspaper to carry your ad, and the more you wanted to do, uh, the more people you wanted to reach, the more you had to pay. And that's kind of been flipped on its head because social media does change all this. You do have all of this information. You know, I'm not going to go through it all, but the bottom line is we are all online, and we are all active on social media. And even though Facebook and Google and all of these, Twitter even, and LinkedIn are now driving people down the payment route, the reality is it's still cheaper than the traditional methods. Because you're not just advertising to someone and hoping that when they see that ad in the paper they're interested in what you do. You're advertising to them at the point at which they are interested. They want what you have or what you provide. And that's when they see your ad. And that's very powerful. But it does require commitment. It's not a magic bullet. It's not a sudden success. It requires commitment. Uh, and in all of those things. So it's a long-term thing got to commit to it at least two to three hours a week and you will start to see the benefits of it in time. Uh, again, these are all the things you can do. And you know what? Three to five very posts a week is ideal. But even if you can just do two, that's okay. Do it. And again, the Pareto Principle 80-20 rule. 80% information, 20% sales. Use the attraction marketing method. Let people choose you because what you're giving them is interesting rather than selling, ramming it down their throat. There are lots of engines to choose, right? But if you just choose one, if you just choose one, then it's either this or this. Now, it doesn't matter. By the way, unless you sell you know, widgets to 
NASA, and that's all you do, then you need to be on Facebook, right? If, but if, on the other hand, you're interested in you're interested in more in Google, then Google Plus, because Google picks that up straight away. The moment you update that, it helps you in terms of your online visibility. So Google Plus is very powerful as well. And you can obviously do all this other stuff, uh, YouTube, SlideShare, and so on. But bottom line, just even if you just pick one, do it and keep doing it and do it well. Rule five, paying for ranking and visibility. Google AdWords, as you've seen, is the most powerful advertising uh, business and promotion tool available today. It's hugely powerful. You can also pay on these other platforms. If you do it right, you should see a 5x to 10x return on your investment, if you do it right. Now, you know, unless you're selling online, unless you have an e-commerce site, the most you can hope to achieve is to bring people to you, get inquiries. Then it's down to what Declan was talking about in terms of conversion and how good you are at converting those clients. But the bottom line is, you should see a 5 to 10x return on investment if you're doing it right. But if you do nothing more tomorrow, if you don't have an AdWords campaign or you don't advertise in any other form, if you do nothing more tomorrow than investigate this and get yourself advertising online, then that's the thing you should do. Because it's really powerful and it really works. And it's instant. So those are the five rules again. This presentation is available on, on our website, digital.org slash presentations. Uh, you can view it, you can download it. Uh, as I say, text, yes, and your name if you'd like to hear more or, or discuss any of these subjects anymore. <coughs> but thank you very much. Uh, and.